Yep. This is a new thing. There we go. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's good manners to let people know they're being recorded. <laughs> Our mice was um, Olive Bet. Olive Salad. I just, I did page just turned. Okay. Um, yeah, here we are. And among vegetables, cucumbers, gourds, watermelons, cucumber melons, apples, and citrons are liable, whether small or large. But Shimon exempts the citrons when they are small, but bitter almonds are liable. Sweet ones are exempt. When sweet ones are liable, bitter ones are exempt. And which is their th which is their threshing for in regard to mysris? Cucumbers and gourds once their fringe is taken off, and if he does not remove it, and when they have been stacked. Melons when they are made smooth, and if it does not make them smooth when he lays them out to dry. Um, vegetables which are tied in bundles, once they have been tied in bundles, if he does not tie them in bundles when he fills the vessel with them, and if he does not fill the vessel once he has gathered all, the, all he needs. A large basket when he covers it, and if he does not cover it when he fills up the vessel, and if he does not fill up the vessel once he has gathered all that he needs. When does this apply? When he takes it to the market. But if he takes it home, he may eat of it a, a, a chance meal until he arrives at home. Dried pomegranate seed, raisins, and carob when he stacks them in a heap. Onions when he peels them, and if he does not peel them when he stacks them in a heap. Grain when it is smoothed down, and if he does not smooth it down when he stacks it in a heap. Pulse when he sifts it, and if he does not sift when he smooths it down. Even though he smooths it down, he may take from the fragmented and from the sides and from what there is inside the husks and eat. Okay. All right. So same. So the same thing carries on now with uh, with wine. Hayayin mishi kape. The wine becomes uh, liable to to masters, and you can't just drink it out of the vat anymore once he's once he has um, skimmed off the the top. Okay. Afal pishi kipa. But even though he has skimmed it off in the in the vat part, kolet mina gasa eliano minatino. He's still allowed to. Uh, so he's still allowed to take out uh, a little bit from the from the upper uh, from from the press and mm -hmm. from the from the from the channel that runs between the the press and the vat, <clears throat> and he can drink from that even though he's already the the bottom is already high and monstrous. Hashemen mishe yered leuka. This is a very similar uh, similar sort of setup with with oil. As soon as it, when it when it goes into the um, when it goes into the to the to the base, now there's no more there's no skimming by the oil. As soon as the once you pressed it and the and the water has run and the oil has run into the uh, into the collection chamber, um, that's when it's hived in mistress. Apple pishi yarad, but even though it has fallen into there, not tell me na akel umi ben hamamal ben apatim v'nosen lechamita v'ratam choy. So, so he's allowed to take from the part of the press and the and the channel that goes between the press and the uh, and the receptacle, and he can take a little bit out and put it into his uh, and put it into his food, and that's fine. You know, if he's sitting out in the field and, and having a snack, so he, he's allowed to do that without taking maser. But if he's got like if, if he's made a little uh, little campfire stove or whatever, and he's uh, and he's cooking. You can't put uh, he can't put the unmastered oil into there because the cooking itself is cover for masters, even though he's out in the field. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Huda disagrees. Rabbi Huda Omer la kolu huna sein chutz mi dava sheyesh bo chomer chometz vatzir. So he says that um, the 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 malacha is, is not finished. Um, even 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 when the the pot is is hot. After he's taken them off the fire, so not not when it's on the fire, but once it's once he's taken it off the fire, it's no longer cover uh, cover for master for the cooking, except if it's got something something harif in it, um, <laughs> that the vinegar or the the brine, right. um, and that helps him to to cook, and therefore that that he says is cover for master. He would agree that if it was on the fire, then also it's uh, it's cover for master even without the the dava harif. So is it that one may put oil prior to its final stage into a dish, so because it's a cliche, where mm -hmm. no cooking takes place. So that's... Correct. Correct. I mean, even the Tanakama agrees with that. Right. So, so, so that, it, that my, it's, it's, it's covey for, for maestros once it's in a hot pan, a saucepan, when, when, they, when they're boiling, correct? Um, yeah, once they're in a, 
it's clear for for for, for masters as soon as it as soon as it's in in the hot pot according to the tanakama as soon as you put it into a clearation it it it, it has to be mastered which means you, you can't put it into a clearation because how are you going to master it after it's already gone into the clearation you have to master it before you put it put it, before you put it in right okay all right okay um so this is the fig cake, right? You make this the circular fig cake of everything is pressed. So once he smoothed it, then it becomes uh, hive in in masa. That's now kavua. Up until then, he could have snacked of it. Uh, furthermore, he says you're allowed to use unmasked figs and and grapes to um, to to do the smoothing. Um, which which Rabbi Yehuda prohibits? Why? Because why did Rabbi Yehuda prohibit it? Because it's because the the table has got a portion of truma in it. Presumably, at some point, you're going to take the masters off it, and it's going to be and and that um, and that truma that you that you're using uh, that, that that the the table that you're using to smooth the the, the cake is uh, is basically truma that's going to be that's going to be lost from this. But uh, uh, but the Tanakhama disagrees and uh, and the Halakha doesn't does not follow Rabbi Huda. Hamachlik uh, If somebody is using grapes to to smooth a to smooth a fig cake, lo and it's not uh, it's not, that that does not um, make it uh, effective. Right. We said grape juice is uh, is, is one of the liquids that uh, that that is machshivotum as as opposed to other fruit juices. Okay, so now this is actually two sides of the same argument, of the same of the same coin. We Rabbi Yehuda Omer Huchsha. No, he says this is actually considered grape juice. So once he's saying it's considered grape juice, and that, that so the second part actually explains his first opinion. He says mm -hmm. this is really considered grape juice that's coming out, and therefore you're you're basically not allowed. You're not allowed to do it if it's not mastered. Where the Tanakama says it's not it's not kashuv it's you're just rubbing grapes on it and it's not considered grape juice coming out of it and therefore and therefore there's no issue with table either. Okay, hagrogeros again your figs, mishiadush, uh, mishiadush, um, from when he from when he uh, from when he presses them into the um, into the. Uh, wait, when he pushes them into the barrel, that's right. when the, the malach is complete. And the um, and the ones that he puts into the into the storehouse, uh, where, he, where he smooths out the pile, basically. If he was pushing his figs into the into the barrel. Umagel b'magora, or he was smoothing it out in the in the storehouse. Nishbera hachavis, but nifchasa hamagora, either the barrel broke or the storehouse walls broke. Lo yachal mehem arai. Now, just because it's it's it, 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 just because the the container broke, doesn't now reverse the fact that they were that they were chayven masters, and you can't and you can't eat from them arai until he's until he's mastered them. But Rabbi Yossi Matir, Rabbi Yossi says it's not considered chayv in in masters until the whole job is done. And since the whole job wasn't done yet, there was no shame of masters on it. But uh, what the Tanakama is saying is that is that if you, as soon as you start pushing the the figs in, the ones that are pushed in, those ones are already hive in masters. Okay. When, when he's using the word jar, and here he uses the word jar, talking about a glass jar at that time, they had glass jars or they sure they had glass. We have we have the, we have in in Sechus Kalim we have the the last parak is dealing with glass. All right, because I'm thinking that there were, you know, there were more more of um, uh, I want to call it the klikeris. You know that there would be more of those than than actual glass. Yeah, but the the klikeris is like the chadpami of of the of their time. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. You'd use a you'd use a, a, a something more more permanent for the for your to fix. I guess you um use something metal or glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Wood. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, very base. Haya over Bashuk. So we've got an Amar Aretz who's walking through the Shuk, and he sees his friends and and says, "Hey, Amar, tulachem teinim. Hey guys, have some have some figs." So he's walking around with a with a thing and saying, "Have some have some figs." Okay, 
Ochlin of Peturin. So you're allowed to you're allowed to eat from the from 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 this bowl, and you're patter from taking masras. Okay. Why is this? Because because the the, the Amaretz is not is not telling you that he's mastered them. He's, 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 he's effectively saying that these are this is Ari. I just picked them off my tree. I haven't mastered them. So have a snack. Have a snack, everyone. No problem. And everyone's having a snack. That's fine. So if they take some of these and, and decide to take them home, then when they get them home, then they have to take Chumo and Maser as Vadai. With a bracha, the whole works. So this walking in the in the in the marketplace, or whatever, would be similar to walking in the field, having a casual mm-hmm. snack in the field. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So uh, we're just saying in the shuk because it's uh, out in the street, right? And and the, and, the, and the people there. So he says, "Hey guys, have some have some figs." He's a nice guy, offering his offering figs to other people. Okay. So the so the so the chaverim among them don't have to uh, don't have to worry about uh, Demaya over here because he's he's not even saying that he mastered them. He, can, he they, they'll eat them casually in the street, and so when they take them home, if they take anything home, then they'll then they'll take truma and Maser. Right. Okay. If, however, the 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 Amaretz is saying Tlu v'hachnisu yeah, I'll take some of these home. Take some home. What is what the Amaretz is saying now is that I've mastered them. And it's now and it's now it's now considered kavua. Mm. So now the so now the um, the the chaverim among them are saying, "Oopsie, these are now figs that are high in masters. We can't snack on them." And okay, but he's saying that he's saying that you have uh, that he's mastered them. But he's an amaretz. We don't believe him because what if he didn't take trumas master? We're in the whole parish of Demai over here. We believe him about the truma, but we don't believe him about the the trumas master. And the Master Shani. So, says the Mishnah, Lo yochlu mehem arai, they can't snack on these. Therefore, so when they bring them home, they must be attacking them as demai. In other words, you don't have to worry about Chuma, just take off Chuma's Master and, uh, and Master Shani. And, uh, and, that's, uh, and, and that's it. So, the, the, so it all depends on what the Amma Aretz is, t- is telling you when he hands out his, uh, mm. hand out, hands out his produce. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go. Yud hey. Yud hey. Between these guys standing in the marketplace looking for worms and bugs, you know, and the, and the figs. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Yud hey. <clears throat> if fenugreek fell into fell into a wine vat of truma and meister shani, if the seed was sufficient to impart a flavor but not the stalk, or if if of the seventh year of um, vineyard kalayim or a dish, if the seed and the wood impart a flavor. Right. So the difference. So the difference there again is that with truma and masis shani, you just have to look at the at the seed because that's the ikka part of the food. But when it comes to to shvius and kilaya kerim, the whole the whole uh, thing has to be counted. Even even the stems have to be counted for the for the possibility of this of this, sir. If one bundles of, if one had bundles of fenugreek of vineyard of kalayim, they must be burnt. If he had bundles of table fenugreek, he must beat them and calculate how much seed they contain and separate from the seed. But he need not separate from the stalks. But if he separated, he must not say, I shall beat and take the stalks and give the seeds. But he must take give the stalks with the seeds. If one pickled olives of chulin with truma olives, whether crushed ones of chulin with crushed ones of truma, or crushed ones of chulin with whole ones of truma, or in a truma water, they are forbidden. But one holds one, but one whole, I'm sorry, but whole ones of chulin with crushed ones of truma are permitted. Shvies Yud Gimel. A prose bowl is not cancelled. This is one of the measures which Hillel, the elder, instituted. When he saw the people refrain from leading to one another and thus violated what is written in the Torah, beware that there be not a base thought in your heart. Hillel instituted the prose bill. It's interesting that at the beginning they say that Hillel, the elder, elder instituted, and at the end they say also Hillel instituted the prose bill. They repeated that. Mm-hmm. Am, I saying, am I saying it wrong? Well, it's, it's, just, it's just that uh, it's, it's introduced as saying this is one of the things that Hillel introduced, and it gives it a whole reason, and therefore Hillel introduced it. Uh-huh. Why do they sometimes say Hillel the Elder or 
uh, because there was more than one Hillel. Oh, does this isn't the same Hillel then? This is no. This this Hillel over here is the Hillel who was the cover of Shammai. Shammai, that's right. Okay, all right. So he'll do the then. All right. Okay. All right, uh, Dalin. This is the substance of the prose bill. I said I transferred to you so and so and so and so the judges in such and such a place that any debt due to me I shall collect whatever I wish, and the judges sign below or the witnesses. Okay. And one more. A predated prose bill is valid, but a postdated one is invalid. Pre predated debt bills bills of indebtedness are invalid, but postdated ones are valid. If one borrows for, from five, he must write a prose bill for each. If five persons borrow from one, they need write only one. Okay. Hey, uh, base five. Let me see. We're gonna... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hoshal. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, Paya? Yeah, right. Okay. Base five. Okay. Um, it once happened that Rabbi Shimon of Mizpah sold before Rabbi Gamil, and they came to the Gaza chamber, and they asked Nachum the scribe, and said, I received from Rabbi Miyasha, who received from father, who received from the, uh, from the pairs, who received from the prophets, a law given to Moshe at Sinai, regarding the person who sows his field with two types of wheat. If he did them in one threshing floor, he gives one payer. Two threshing floors, he gives two payer. Payot. A field that non-Jews reap, robbers reap, ants have bitten, the wind or the cattle broke as exempt. If he reaped half of it and robbers reaped half of it, it is exempt. If the obligation to pay it is fulfilled with standing corn. And if robbers reaped half of it and he reaped half of it, he gives pay it from what he reaped. If he reaped half of it and sold half of it, the purchaser gives pay it for the whole. If he reaped half of it and he consecrated half of it, the person who redeems it from the pleasure gives pay it for the whole. Okay. Oh, los. Test five gimel. In the case of oil, a case of barrels that are outdoors, standing upright or lying on their sides, which touch one another by a square hand breadth, if there is tumor underneath one barrel, tumor penetrates directly up and down. In which in which cases is in what cases is supply? When the barrels are tahor, however, if they are tome or a hand breadth above the ground where there is there and there is tumor underneath one of them, the area beneath all of them becomes tome. In the case of a house divided by boards or curtains from the sides or from the joist, if there is tumor inside the house, utensils inside the partition section remains tahor. If there is tumor inside the partition section, utensils inside the house become tome. Where there are utensils inside the partition section, if there is a cube hand breadth, they become tome. If not, they remain tahor. Where the partition is built on the floor and tumor is inside the partition section, utensils inside the house become tummy. When tumor is inside the house and utensils are inside the partition section, if the area containing the utensils is a tefak by a tefak and a tefak high, the utensils remain tahor. If not, they become tummy because the floor of the house, as deep as one can go, is like the house. In the yeah, case that's it. That's it. We've done three. I did? I did? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, what is our... Uh... Uh, one may buy a, a, a trodden wine press from an idolater, even though he takes with his hand and places in the mound. And it does not become Nesek wine until it descends into the cistern. If it descends into the cistern, that which is in the cistern is prohibited, and the remainder is permitted. One may tread with an idolater in the wine press, but one may not harvest grapes with him. If a Jewish a Jew processes his fruits in a state of tumor, one may not tread, nor may one harvest grapes with him, but one may transport barrels to the wine press with him and carry away the wine press with him. If a baker processes in tumor, one may not knead or roll dough with him, but one may transport bread to the retailer with him. If idolater was found standing beside a wine cistern, if he has a lean, uh, upon it, it is prohibited. If he does not have a lean upon it, it is permitted. If he fell into the cistern and came out, or he measured it with a reed, or he flicked out a hornet with the reed, 
or if he was tapping on top of a foaming barrel, all these places were actual incidences, and they said it should be sold. Reb Shimon, however, permits if he took a barrel and threw it in his anger into the cistern, this was once an incident, and they declared it fit. If one prepared, That's it, we've done three. I did? Yeah. Okay. And Yevamos Gimel Yud. Two men who betrothed two women, but when they entered the bridal canopy, they confused one with the other. They are obligated to bring a sin offering. I don't know how they did that. I always, I always laugh at these cases. <laughs> they are obligated to bring a sin offering because of adultery. If they were brothers because of the prohibition against a brother's wife, if they were sisters because of the prohibitions against a wife's sister, if they are menstruous because of the prohibition against a menstruant, we separate them for three months in case they are pregnant. But if they were minors and capable of childbirth, we destroy them immediately. If they were from the daughters of Gehanim, they had to We, we do what with them? We restore them immediately. Restore them, right, okay. If they were the daughters of Kahanam, they are disqualified from eating Truma. Uh, if someone performed Kalitza with his Yuvama, and then she was found to be pregnant and she gave birth, if the child is capable of living, he's permitted to marry her relatives, and she is permitted to marry his relatives, and he has not disqualified her from the priesthood. If the child is not capable of living, he is forbidden to marry her relatives, and she is forbidden to marry his, and he has disqualified her from the priesthood. If someone married his Yuvama, and then she was found to be pregnant, and she gave birth, the child is capable, and if the child is capable of living, he must discharge her, and they are obligated to bring an offering. However, if the child is not capable of living, he may retain her. If it is not clear whether it is the ninth month child of the former husband, or the seventh month child of the latter, he must divorce her. The child is legitimate, and they are obligated to bring a pending guilt offering. That's us for today. And I got to run. I'm actually okay, going to get I'm... a. I'm going to get a Corona vaccine today. Oh, the second one. That's it. No, right. um, I'm, it's the first one actually, and the only first, one because oh. I'm a, because I'm. A,